Okay, since it's like already 10.35, so good morning everyone, though it's not that early. Uh, this is Selena Xing, an evangelist from my sport team in Huawei, and today it's been a great pleasure to be here sharing about the automated parallel technique in my sport to boost the efficiency of large language model development and training. So today's content will be divided into these four topics. First, we'll just like briefly go through the evolution of artificial intelligence in industry, and we're going to details to talk about like the native support for MySports automatic parallelism in details with code implementation to see how it is different from like other frameworks and what we've done to improve the usability as well as the efficiency and performance of large language model training. And we'll just talk about some like detailed issues during the large language model training and our solution to tackle with them. And finally, it's just a report about the ecosystem progress about my sport team. So currently, we, as we all know, we are experiencing the fourth wave of artificial intelligence, which is characterized by the rise of large language models, for example, like ChatGPT and GPT-4. So this seems to redefine the role of machine learning and deep learning from just perceiving and comprehending the world's information and data into just a restricted field towards like a, towards generating the, for example, images, text, and other forms of context in a general domain. And especially, it can also work as an assistant with the professional knowledge of a particular area. So we can see there's a big jump of the capability of these models. And this is driven, this is powered by the is exponential growth of the large the size of the large language models. And the research consistently shows that as we increase, for example, the number of parameters of the models, expanding the size of the training data, as well as deploying more computational resources, the large language models become more powerful. However, like this kind of phenomenon, also known as the scaling law, has driven a relentless push forward to even larger models. And this has brought the challenges in terms of the difficulty to, for example, to develop the large language model, because we not only need to consider like how we implement the algorithms, but also like the knowledge from a, an experienced software engineer. And also, we need to maintain the stable language, language model training to lower the recovery time once the failure occurs. And finally, we also need to lower the cost of inference of the model. So a today's topic will mainly focus on the first two challenges, which is the development and training. So we summarize the challenges of large-scale cluster training for large language models into four domains. And since we mentioned in the previous slide that the model exponentially grows, so it becomes impossible to load this model with hundreds of billions of parameters onto a single device, because it takes a great amount of memory by just storing the parameters, not to say its entire training progress, including the model parameters and also the activations, gradients, as well as the optimizer states. So the distributed machine learning of the models becomes not only just an optimization method, but also an, a necessity in this large language model training. And once we tried to distribute this large scale model across different devices, and the second like obstacle comes, is to say that it, we need to design a really proper way to slice these models onto across the devices so that we can we can we can like maintain its efficiency, and these a lot of factors need to be considered in this case. For example, like the number of parameters, the computational workload, the computation type, as well as the cluster bandwidth, and from also from the perspective of developers, and we are always considering like which is like the suitable programming diagram needed. To, for the uh, developers to design like the slicing and distributed algorithms and how it is different from like the common uh, script for the model training. 
And finally, once we've also launched the training of large language models, it is also difficult in the optimization because we need to make a balance between the correctness as well as the performance and the availability of commutations. So overall, as a conclusion, considering all these four walls of the large-scale cluster training, we a developer not only needs to master the algorithm knowledge, but also like the software knowledge to know how the devices can communicate with each other and how, for example, the tensor is sliced across these devices. So our solution to tackle with these four challenges is to design a framework that natively supports the automatic parallelism of this large language model training, including to just use a few lines, just use a few lines to choose like the strategy automatically for this training. And we can make a combination of these different uh, slicing poli policies from multi-dimensions. And we'll go into the details. So as this is an elaboration about like the uh, par distributed parallel parallelization capability of Mindswell, including all this multi-dimensional hybrid parallelism with the commonly used parallelism, such as the operator level parallelism. This might be a special name, and we'll explain later why we call it like operator level parallelism instead of like other names such as tensor parallelism or model parallelism, and as well as the pipeline parallelism, optimizer parallelism, and. As regards to multi-dimensional storage and heterogeneous optimization, we performed, for example, recomputation to optimize the memory. And for the operator level par parallelism, we may just brief briefly like review like the uh, role of tensor parallelism uh, with this visualized example. Uh, of this straightforward computation of matrix multiplication. So in the tensor parallelism, each tensor in this case, in this case, like the W here, is sliced into like two multiple chunks. And here we have like two chunks. Each of this is assigned to like one of these two devices. So that for each step with the same mini batch of data input, the the data is processed independently in parallel along like each device to have like different outputs. And because of the strong dependence of the input output relationship between the operators, we need to do like the all gather communication to aggregate the output together and to pass it into other like the uh, following operators. So in this case, why we call it like the operator level parallelism in Monsball is that it functions at the level of individual operators. That is to say, we model each operator independently and so that developers can just define the stra stra strategy, whether we need to like s slice in terms of rows or in terms of columns for the tenses associated with each operator. And under this design, there's no need to care about how to manage the actual distribution of each shard of the model across the clusters manually. And for the implementation of the operator level parallelism, here's a code for like really simple like two, a uh, really simple like uh, network computation, including like two uh, multiple like computations, with the comparison with the Megatron solution. And from the Megatron solution, we can see that we we need to implement both like the uh, how like the sli how the model or the tensor is sliced across different devices and how they gather together both in the forward path and the backward propagation. But in MySpot, we only need to care about how we design the shard strategy by operating this shard function upon the operators. Here is shown by the ops Matt Moore here. And to go into details about this function, we can see that we are actually calculating like the x, which is the input, multiplied by the weight matrix, and then like the result is continuously uh, multiply, multiplying with another weight matrix called V. 
And in this case, let's look at into like the first calculation, which is x matrix multiplied by w. Here we have normally we'll have like the dimensions of x with the best size as the first dimension and input size as the second dimension, and with width of input size and output size. So we have like two brackets in the sharp function with each corresponding to the sharp policy for each input. So here we have for one for the x, which means to slice x in the column uh, in, the, uh, in the dimension of rows. So here in the dimension of batch size, and to maintain the correctness of matrix multiplication, we just keep like the entire weight matrix uh, for each device. So here we are actually doing the data parallelism. So that's why we have like actually the operator level parallelism. It's kind of like a slightly higher level name for this parallelism because it's referring to the parallelism that contains or involves the slicing of tenses associated with the operators, no matter it is the model parameter or or the data input. So, and, oh, and similarly, for the second multiple computation, we have like the final result of the x multiplied by w and further multiplied by v. And here we can see like we have one one here, like which is number corresponding to the number of slices, number of shards for each computation. And here we just maintain like the entire input of y. And to slice, like to do the column slicing of the parameter of w here. So like in this case, we split into four parts along the second dimension. So in this case, we uh, just leave the work of actual slicing and distribute its shard into a particular device and finally to commit finally let like, the devices to communicate together to the framework. And we just need to care about like which tensor we need to slice and how many number of shards we need to obtain and which is strongly relying on like the number of devices available and which dimension is this operation uh, functioned on. And for like the parallel parallelism, unlike the traditional data parallelism and um, model or tensor parallelism as shown in the previous slide, which suffers from the limited communication bandwidth between servers. Pipeline parallelism enhances its efficiency by sequentially just distributing the model in, in terms of slicing layers instead of slicing the tenses across in different stages. And each stage may contain like, uh, multiple layers or segments of the model. And this approach allows like each device to just handle the layers or segments it is responsible for. And they just need to do the communication between adjacent devices. And in this case, for the, uh, for the pipeline parallelism, we are actually doing the same work. So we just leave like how they, how the send and receive operations to the framework. So we just abstract it away, which is also complicated to implement and just let the developers to design like which layers are assigned to, for example, the first device or the second device by adding the text of pipeline, pi pipeline stage here. So as this example shown on the left hand side, we have like a resident model which where like the head and to like the layer two is assigned to the first device and layer three to the final fully connected layer assigned to like the second, uh, second device by just adding the pipeline stage interface here. So it is operating uh, on a granularity of a cell. So every cell here, or also, also, which is the fundamental unit of the network with the trainable parameters must be signed to a pipeline stage. And it must be executed in the same order of like what is what's like the total workflow is executed through. And for like the implementation of, and for the recomputation, it, um, it addresses the issue of the memory optimization from a different approach by trading off the computation resources, for example, by adding additional computation time to save the memory usage. Uh, except for like the static memory occupation of, for example, the model parameters 
gradients and optimized states, we also have like dynamic, dynamic occupations, for example, the activations, which will accumulate through the forward pass. So that's why we will have this like peak of the memory allocation in this entire map, which may exceed the capability for device memory. And in this case, for the computation, we just uh, really, we don't, uh, we don't store all the activations in the forward pass, but to release, release them and to recalculate the forward pass when the gradients are required to be computed during the backward propagation. So it kind of like wasting some of like the computation time, which is acceptable since the forward pass is uh, cause less time than the back propagation to make sure that like this peak can be lower just to this like platform. And for user convenience, MLS will provide a recomputation interface shown as shown here as to recompute for the individual operators and cells. So when it's so it's not only uh, available for the single operator like Redo, but also just a combination of operators in the network. As a cell is assigned to this recompute tag, and all like the forward operators within the cell will be set to computation. So for this like uh, for the process of the recomputation, we'll add tags to the operators once we place the recompute interface here. And once during the compile phase, the type the tag of the operator is identified, the framework will automatically insert the release of forward pass as well as the recompute of forward pass during the back propagation into the overall process. And for zero, it tackles with the problem from a different aspect, but not just making compromises between, for example, like the computation time and the memory op optimization, but to slice the optimizer state here, which involves, for example, the mem momentum of optimization algorithms. So as shown in this graph here, we have like the stat static memory like uh, over overload uh, divided into like three main like uh, domains, which is which are the parameters shown as blue here, and the gradients shown as orange, as well as the optimizer states shown as green here, and we can see like the dis from the distribution of the memory. Uh, upon like a single device, the parameters of gradients occupies like similar, pla uh, similar place, which is kind of like neglig uh, negligible like compared to the optimizer states. So what Zero does is to partition the optimizer stage, which um, takes like account the majority of the memory usage across different devices. So it can effectively reduce like the memory consumed to adjust a quarter of it by simply slicing the optimizers states. And we can go further to like the extreme, but also slicing, for example, the gradients, and as well as even the parameters, which corresponds to the implementation of 0, 02 and 0, 03. But this big drop of the memory consumed needs to needs uh, causes the rise of the communication because we need the parameters to do like for example the together and reduce together to communicate between devices and uh, to get the final outcome for like the next computation and for mindful implementation about zero, it matches with the zero three and it's named as optimizer parallelism in mindful. So for the implementation of this, we first set the semi semi auto parallel mode here, and we'll explain like why we call it semi auto parallel instead of like just the auto parallel, and also we enable like the parallel optimizer. So we just need to add this line to set or activate the optimizer parallelization in, in the, uh, across the framework before the network is initialized. And finally, like all these capabilities of the automatic or semi-automatic parallelism is leveraged 
by the toolkit provided by MySport. So what it is is to simplify the overall development process of large language model production. So we have like MySport Transformers, which is focusing on the transformer-based models, as well as the Mind one which is mainly responsible for the diffusion-based models. And for these two suits, we have like the we have, we've provided like the rebuilt open source pre-trained models, for example, like Llama, GLM, Bytran, et cetera, as well as like the downstream tasks, the common downstream tasks, for example, like the tech generation, image captioning, captioning, and so on. So with the help of these two kits, we can just use like a few lines of code to perform the overall process of like, for example, a Llama model training, including its, tra its pre-training, fine-tuning, inference, and the final the deployment. And for like the fine-tuning of the large language models, we have a toolkit of, of MySQL pad, which is also called in, in the MySQL transformers when going through like the fine-tuning process. And this provides like the rebuilt fine-tuning algorithms, especially the parameter efficient uh, fine-tuning methods, for example, like the LoRa, to fine-tune the model just fine-tune just 40% of the parameters of the model, but to achieve a compatible performance with like the full parameter fine tuning. So this is also a way to effectively reduce like the memory cost of uh, the large, during the large language model fine tuning. And for MySQL RHF, so as its name said, it is responsible for like the reinforcement learning from human feedback, allowing the developers to design the customized GPT ChatGPT-like models. And with, after just discussing like the overall like key challenges for, of like the large language model training and how we implement like these different forms of parallelization, we're going to some like part of those challenges or we, we say it's the large language model issues and, the, and our solutions. So, it's just like to emphasize all this parallelization capabilities is built upon the slicing of static graphs into subgraphs with each sub subgraph assigned to a single device. So the single operator script is uh, built into the compu computing graph by the compiler and it will automatically slice the graph based on the distribution strategy as we defined and which uh, gives like kind of a easy to use and strategy flexible uh, solution to the, de uh, to the developers. And the overall like technical s uh, stack has been divided into five levels from starting from the bottom of the fundamental parts towards the uh, advanced parts. And since we've talked a lot about the multi-dimensional parallelism here. And so we will just explain some of like our just uh, self-design, for example, the intralayer pipeline, which is kind of a optimized level compared with the intralayer pipeline solution of the Megatron LM, as well as like the global memory re reuse and the grub sync, which, responsible f which is responsible for the memory op optimization and the high performance scheduling. And from like the experience of the large language model training, it seems like the typical distributed large language model training seems to form like a pattern, including like the data parallel com combined with optimizer parallel, also called like named zero, and model parallel. So here like referring to, for example, like the tensor parallels, as well as the pipeline and recompute together. So for this recipe, we'll just slice like the entire model and input in from different dimensions as shown here in the graph. And for this design, we'll bring like three major costs of the efficiency. One is the model parallelism activation communication. Because of the property that we need to update like the outcome of the computation after the model parallel to make sure that it stays consistent with the next computation. So we need to do the computation every time we finish the communication every time we finish the computation. And so this a necessary communication between devices is difficult to hide or overlap with the computations. So there was always a bit of time waiting for the devices to communicate. 
And the second one stays for the Peplum bubble, which refers to the idle devices when, when performing the pipeline uh, parallelization. This is because, like, for example, like for the devices which is in the later like subsequential order, they need to wait until like their previous stages to obtain the final like for to obtain and to obtain and send like the outcome and for it to go through like the whole process. So they were always not like all the devices are working at like simultaneously. So which cause lowers the efficiency of the overall training. So we just want to like make sure like the ratio of the working devices at the time is as high as possible, as high as possible. And finally, for the data parallel, we have like the gradient aggregation every time we finish data parallelization to uh, aggregate the gradient and send it and to copy it or send it across devices for further mode, uh, mode optimization. And this phenomenon gets worse when we are scaling up the models for like a large scale like of clusters. So let's go into step by step about like how for each issue how we is, uh, how we work on them, and for like the tensor parallelism or just we just call like for both a tensor parallelism sequence parallelism as well as the axiomatic parallelism of MOE models uh, as the operator level parallelism, and this like interlayer like tensor parallelism communications is hard to overlap and will add about like twenty percent to 40% extra latency to the overall process. And what we do is to overlap the intralayer uh, tensor parallelism communication by the intralayer pipeline. So it's kind of to further slice, like f f uh, to do the further slicing. So for example, like as we always as like the structure of large, large language model has been converged to the, the structure of a transformer, including the attention followed by the multilayer, uh, follow, sorry, or followed by the MLP. And we'll have the communication of the a tensor a model parallelization of every time we finish the computation. So what we did is to split further splits along either the sequence axis or the batch axis, so that we have like, for example, f uh, let's look into like the first case about slicing along the sequence axis. We have like the first half half of the sequence and the second half of the sequence, and because of like the computation property and the, of the attention, like it's hard to slice based on the sequences. So we slice uh, the linear uh, the linear computation for the projection and the final step. So the communication of this linear com computation is overlapped of the first half of the sequence is overlapped with the linear computation of the second half sequence. So that we really can we don't need to just wait until the communication finishes. And the similar case works uh, works on like the splitting along the batch axis, where we are able to sl also slice the attention and to hide the communication, uh, hide the communication just into like the ca calculation of other batches. And this will reduce like the intralayer communication cost by about seventy five percent, which is a really just a reason reasonable reduce. And for the interlayer pipeline issues, we, for like for the first approach about the pipeline bubbles, so as shown here in the dark areas, so these are the idle devices that is not working, and we and first and the first approach is to, uh, the uh, first uh, first approach is to divide like the batch size into micro batches. So in this case, we have like. Uh, about eight micro batches acro distributed across like four devices. So for once like the first micro batch is passed towards like the second device, we'll then just input insert like the second micro batch to device one, so that like the device one is still working on the next micro batches when device two is pr still processing. So also in this case, we perform like the call, a strategy called one forward, one backward. So that is to in immediately call the backward pause after the forward pause of this single micro batch is finished. So in the, this case, we'll reduce like the 
uh, activation accumulation about like the device so that we can avoid like the peak of the memory over overload. And we can further to further like for the conduct improvement by just assigning multiple stages to each device, which is called like the inter interlayer pipeline. So in this case, we just assign interle interleaved like uh, stages towards different devices. So other than we have like, for example, layer one, layer one and layer two assigned to device one, probably we'll assign like, for example, layer one and layer five to device one. So it's like we first compute the half of the first half of the model. Uh, during like the forward pass, and then continue to compute the second half of the network, which uh, also to some extent increase the ratio of the like working working devices to reduce the pipeline bubbles. But here we can see that like it this is trading off like the memory cost of devices, especially for device one, because we it need to wait until like the entire model to finish its forward computation. So we can see there will be like a huge uh, jump of the uh, activations here, which, uh, which is memory costly. And What's, uh, what we designed for in this case, so this is like a similar, uh, similar case as the previous slide. So we have the forward pass, which is, mar which is marked as green and orange, and the backward passes. So the blue corresponds to the backward pass of the green forward passes, and the red one corresponds to like the backward pass of the orange forward passes. And in this case, we parse partially like postpones the forward passing of a few macro batches. So we can see that the green forward passes, some of the green forward passes has been postponed to a later stage so that we can reduce the activation memory for like especially like the first device. And we can also do some flexible configuration about just adding the all forward all backwards together with the one for one war one full, one backward. So it will solve the problem of the data parallel gradient aggregation. So we can see that the gradient aggregation here is overlapped with the backward calculation of, like, of the second, uh, the second like stages of the, of like the second uh, micro batches or second group of micro batches. And. Uh, as you can tell from this graph, like the one forward and one backward and all forward, all backward can be flexibly adjusted to achieve like the best computation or the communication performance. And uh, like the ratio is dependent on the model size and the cluster scale. And finally, like the SOMAS, which is the memory management for the computing graph, basically like the framework controls the entire memory pool, all occupying all available memory by default. And during the compilation, it identifies the life cycle of tenses and allocates the memory accordingly. So that with this global information, we can optimize the best memory allocation and release plan for this entire process. And also for like the graph compiling and execution, our previous plan involves like small scale or like the fundamental operators, which needs to be launched one by one in a sequential manner, so as shown here. So which with time in host device interaction and has the bottleneck in the efficiency improvement. So the key solution is to build like the computer graph from source code and sync the entire graph to device in one go, which will gain back about like the 5% improvement. And as regards like the usability, as we mentioned in the challenges, uh, in the challenges of large language model training, it is uh, it is unavoidable to have failures during this long time large language model training across a large scale uh, clusters, no matter like how it is caused, for example, by the node error, computing error, or the network error. So the main like the main like importance stays in the case that how we can reduce the recovery time so that it can re quickly recover to its, for example, latest state and continue training instead of to, instead of restarting the entire cluster whenever like a failure occurs. So in this case, once like a node is like 
breaks down during the training will isolate this failure node and do the elastic scaling cluster. And for this vertical, we'll analyze the error, whether it is like uh, caused by, for example, computing error, network error, or the node error, and to load the checkpoint before the failure and to keep on the training. So with this overall design, we can reduce like the failure recovery of the model into like about 20 minutes and supporting the stable training for uh, nearly like a month. And also, like uh, speaking of like the usability of uh, in terms of the development, we uh, just like a revision about like the implementation of different modes of parallelism. We we can here see that although it's already been simplified, we still need to design like the shard strategy, which requires knowledge about how the tensors is is sliced and the distributed machine, uh, large language model training. So is there a case or is there like a way that we can also just abstract abstract away the work of designing this uh, short strategy and just let the framework to do all of the jobs. And that is, in, that is like the transfer from the semi-autoparallelism to the fully autoparallelism. So for the fully, like for the design of the fully automatic parallelism, and we have like a, we'll build a like course model based on the compute and the communication of the MPUs. So it will automatically design like which slicing strategies or which most of the parallelization we are using and how we uh, allocate them in terms of allocate in across the devices, how we, how we manage the memory and as well as the commutation and communications. And we'll achieve it by using like the bi-directional reg regression and we re which reduces the search complexity from exponential to linear. So for example, for an experienced expert, probably takes, for example, two weeks or even a month to design like a suitable, like way, a suitable, suitable strategy of the parallelization just by trolls. And with like this technique, we can reduce it, for example, just in 10 minutes to automatically search for a strategy that can achieve about 90% of the expert's best. And finally, about just a, a brief report about the ecosystem progress of the MySQL framework. We, uh, since our open sourcing in 2020, we have been focusing on gathering the strengths from a large variety, including the, the industry's scientific research field and open source community to develop the ecosystem. And now we have like about uh, 7,750,000 downloads all over the World. And we are also organize, organizing, like for example, the activities like MySQL study groups, which is uh, abbreviated as the MSGs, across 22 cities, not just only uh, in China, but also seven other countries globally. So we can uh, just let let the developers into the impersonal online uh, forms to understand like the artificial intelligence and how to do the development based on MySQL. And in terms of like the uh, open source ecosystem. Now we have like 34,000 community, uh, community contributors, and with also build like building the collaboration of more than 5,500 uh, 5, enterprise uh, clients, and we also cover the majority city, uh, cities in China by uh, participating into, for example, the commun uh, computing networks and the uh, across some key cities. And in terms of like the open source large language models we are supporting, because uh, currently like our uh, our recipe will be just to choose like a pre trained mod uh, a pre typical pre trained model we want to fine tune on, and to con choose like a. A uh, parameter efficient fine tuning method with our self designed data set and to try to deploy this fine tuned model across, for example, the dev uh, upon like the devices or the phones. So, to for like the application and for like the uh, large language uh, large language model, for example, the MySQL Transformers Toolkit. Now it is providing like 30 plus pre trained models as well as like 10 plus fine tuning algorithms and 10 plus downstream tasks as shown in this graph. 
and the full money one, which is for the diffusion-based models. Now it is also supporting like 20 plus pre-trained models with like six plus fine-tuning algorithms and six plus stable uh, uh, sampling algorithms for the inference and the templates end-to-end -end components for including, for example, the mixed precision and like the data pre-compute to further optimize, to, uh, to do the further optimization. And finally, we're also doing the compatible, uh, com make like the toolkit compatible with the hugging face diffusers to lower like the cost of study for a developer which is familiar with the hugging face diffusers. So we can use like the same hab we can follow the same habit when designing like the overall production workflow using minds uh, using Mindspool one. And finally, like this is just uh, the information about our official website, including like the documents uh, introducing the, the design of the core framework and the uh, and the access to the repositories, as well as like the repository for the core framework and the repositories as shown here for like the seals, including like the those we mentioned, like multiple transformers and multiple one. And we are welcome, we're very welcome to like the developers who ever feel interested to join the MySpot community. And that's all for like uh, the full report. And thank you very much for listening. Oh. Okay. Yes, please. Um, thanks for the talk. Uh, can you go back to the slides where we do OP parallel? Uh, yeah, I just want to check. Uh, do you do? Uh, yeah, here, here, here. Just go back. Right. So you said uh, in, in the code that OP is uh, metmo.shard. So you do sharding on OP or do sharding on Tensor? Oh, we are doing the sharding on Tensor, but it is like operating at the level of operators. So we just focus on like the operators as a unit and to consider like the slicing of tensors which are associated with this operator. So that's why I call operator level. Yeah, it's, it's a bit confusing because like you share, you, if, you, if you do sharding on OP, then the question is like, do you do sharding on the weights or on the, for example, here you, there might be bias, right? Or you do sharding on the input or the output. Uh, I'm not sure, like, uh, does this API uh, clarify? Uh, so, like, to this, uh, to define, like, whether, like, we are doing sharding, for example, on the input or, for example, the weight or bias, we are using, like, we are implementing in terms of, like, this bracket with each bracket corresponding to, like, for example, the tensors associated with this operator. So, for oh, example, okay. like, for well, I, I see, I see. Input. Okay. So, do you have, like, uh, in, internal implementation of something uh, like uh, D tensor equivalence? Uh, for this, I guess like it's better to refer to like the old official website about like this. Okay. Okay. Uh, another question about um, zero. You're talking about your implementation of zero. So do you have like um, some something like Torch FSDP wrapper to implement zero, or um, you kind of like break the functionality of FSDP into the sharding of specific OPs or tensors? So for like the zero here, or we call like the optimizer like parallelism, it's uh, it's just like matching with like the third level of zero. So it's doing like the partitioning of all of like the par uh, parameters gradients on optimizer states. Yeah, I, I know that you have this functionality. I mean, like, do you have? Um, is it a wrapper inside Mindspore? Set, for example, something like mindsport.fsdp, and you can use this wrapper to wrap a, a, a TP model or something like that, or you break the FSDP functionalities into specific uh, into the shardings of specific tensors or gradients or parameters. Oh, I see. So it's like the implementation is not like for for example doing the wraps. So by it's kind of like simple just by adding like this line to enable like the parallel optimizer and just like the framework to do the work which might be abstracted away. Um okay. Thank
sorry for uh, sorry for like the time uh, time limit, and probably we can if if any of us like have like the questions we can discuss like in person. 